Oh, look at this cutie. Can I pet your dog? Of course. What's their name? This is Birdie. Hi, Birdie. How old is she? She's five years old. Is she a, is she a Jindo mix? She is a Jindo mix. Most people don't know what that is. She's yeah. so beautiful. Oh, thank you. I'm so sorry. What's what's your name? I'm Gus. Gus Kepler! Do you mind if I join you on your walk? Not at all. Let's do it. So does anybody besides me just now swoon over Birdie before they recognize you? Uh, everybody swoons over Birdie. <laughs> if I walk by someone and they don't smile at her, I'm like, oh, you're a terrible person. A little bit of judgment. <laughs> she gets her fair share of attention. She's got mm -hmm. a sweet face. Now, this is actually our second dog named Birdie in the last few weeks. Oh. Jennifer Gardner also has a dog named Birdie, and we interviewed her. What? inspired her name. Right, now I have to sue Jennifer Garner. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had another dog that passed away. Um, I'm sorry. Birdie was from a, a dog meat farm in South Korea, mm -hmm. and I was competing in the Olympics in South Korea and rescued her. And I had another dog, had a really short life, had a heart condition, and was obsessed with birds. So kind of in a little tribute to her, named Birdie Birdie. Now, Jindos are, are fairly rare in the US, right? Yeah. For those in the audience who haven't interacted with one, Tell us about the breed. Uh, they're a breed from South Korea, which is where she's from. Mm -hmm. um, they are known to be very loyal and brave. They're very, very faithful to like one owner. And she okay. has a lot of those qualities. She's, she's pretty friendly with most people, mm -hmm. but she's definitely my girl. <laughs> <laughs> also, I think typically Jindos are more like people dogs than dog dogs. Yeah. She loves other dogs. Yeah. She just had to say hello. She has to. Usually if she's walking, uh, she'll like lay down and freeze if she sees another dog and like wait until they get there. <laughs> and she would do it as a puppy and people were like, oh, my puppy used to do that. Like she'll grow out of it. Mm -hmm. And she never has. I love it. <laughs> it's so cute. It's annoying if I have like coffees and stuff in my hand, but it's still the cutest thing ever. Other than that, yeah. Now, have you always had dogs? Um. Not always. I actually, the, the I grew up with cats. Okay. I grew up in uh, affordable housing. We weren't allowed to have dogs. So we had two cats, Tomboy and Coco. Uh, and I always wanted a dog. And then after my parents split, my dad moved elsewhere. And so for my 11th birthday, he took me to uh, an animal rescue to pick out a dog. And I picked out my first dog, Mac, uh, who was very, very cute. And I chose him because he was the one quiet dog at the kennel. Like they were all going crazy and barking and he was like the shy one in the corner and I fell in love with him. And this is, that's kind of how her temperament was too. Um, I like a shy dog. Now, how did coming home with her differ from that very first experience of rescuing a dog? Uh, it was really different. I mean, I've actually kind of done a lot of animal rescue. I, um, I skied professionally and competitively, and I competed in my first Olympics in Sochi in 2014. And my ex and I brought back a handful of strays, and it kind of like ended up getting a bunch of media attention, and the Humane Society International stepped in to try and help facilitate the transport of the dogs. And two of those dogs live with him. One of them actually passed away recently. Um, and then, the mother of that family of dogs is my mom's dog and still my mom's dog. She loves her so much, more than she loves her kids. <laughs> um, no, that's not true. I just sort of continued to work with the Humane Society International. Come here. And uh, in 2018, when I was going back to the Olympics, they made me aware of the dog meat trade uh, and just how kind of cruel it is and the way that they treat the animals, the way they kill the animals, and just how inhumane it is. And so I wanted to help. And while I was there in South Korea, I went to visit a dog meat farm and witnessed Birdie being born. A few months later, when Birdie was old enough to travel, uh, she was flown to the States. I picked her up in DC and named her Birdie because my previous dog, BMO, was obsessed with birds. So needless to say, big proponent of rescue yeah, ever I'm since a, those I'm a big, experiences. I'm a big animal rescue guy. Yeah. I also just think that rescue dogs are kind of the best dogs. I mean, <laughs> I, I understand no, that I'm people gonna... have specific breeds that they love and 
Uh, I don't, I'm not shaming anybody, but I just, I, I love rescues. I think that there's like a special connection with a rescue dog and they like appreciate you and love you and uh, I don't know. It feels, oh, of course. It feels different. Yeah, I'm not, certainly not gonna argue with you there. I moved to LA in 2019 and I was running the We Rate Dogs accounts and I felt like a fraud being here without a dog. And then, you know, I, I stumbled across a German Shepherd uh, on one of the rescue pages I followed and just, you know, fell in love immediately. And, and he, uh, he passed late last year, but oh, I had him, I, it's okay. I adopted him as a senior. He was already 10 years old. Oh, I love so, that you did that. Yeah, I got him until he was about 13, which is very old for a, a German Shepherd. But yeah, I've got his ears tattooed. Oh, that's um, really sweet. He had one, one wonky ear. I love uh, that. I, yeah, thank you. Oh, I love German Shepherds. I also, I really love that you adopted an older yeah. dog. I have a tattoo also for the other dog, Bimo, that oh, yeah? passed away. Ugh, it was kind of a husky mix. Oh, wow. More husky than, than Jindo or more yeah, husky? Yeah, more husky her? than Jindo. Gotcha. Um, it was like, she was like husky and Great Pyrenees. Mm -hmm. And she actually has some Great Pyrenees in her too. Yeah. She's mostly Jindo and then she's like, got a little Akita, a little Chow, a little Sheba. She's like, she's very Asian. <laughs> she's a very Asian girl. All the Asian dog breeds. Shortly after, like when she was like six months old, I started dating a guy that I was with for like four years. We broke up last year, um, but he had a dog and his dog was a little Jack Russell mix. And when we would go for walks, he would pee on everything. <laughs> and before that, she never did that. She yeah. would pee like a lady, like one time <laughs> on her walk. And then because she was hanging out with him all the time, she started lifting her leg to pee like a boy and she pees on everything. That's kind of like one thing. And then, I mean, the other thing that I was saying, when she sees another dog, she lays down and plants. freezes. She plants. And it, it's like almost as if it's a sneak attack, but it's like, baby, <laughs> everyone can see you. Um, but she does that almost every time, which is really cute. She doesn't really actually bark a lot, which is really yeah. nice. But when I come home, whether I've been gone for like a week on a trip, or I've been gone for like three minutes getting a coffee, she goes insane. She Equally like, is exciting. She spins around, she pees, she howls, <laughs> she like squeaks. Um, it's really cute. I feel like my neighbors must think I have like a dog kennel or something because she's so <laughs> crazy loud as soon as she hears the car pull in. Yeah, so you've done a lot of modeling over the years, but so has Birdie. Yeah. She's been in an Abercrombie campaign, calendars, she's even on the cover of a dog food. So I have to ask, who's the better model? Uh, uh, I mean, Birdie. Birdie? Birdie. Well, she's better looking. She's, uh, she doesn't take direction quite as well in front of a camera. So and she us. sometimes will wander off and do her thing. But um, no, she's got the face for it. I, I actually was doing an Abercrombie campaign and just brought her to the shoot. And then the photographer was like, hey, can we maybe put her in some pictures? <laughs> and so I had her in the pictures with me and then those are the ones they ended up using, which is pretty <laughs> cute. Now you've slept in a tent on a mountain in Peru with Steve-O and his dog, Wendy. Yeah. I have to ask who the better roommate is, Steve-O or Wendy? Um, Wendy. Wendy? Yeah, <laughs> Steve-O smells worse. <laughs> what was that experience like? Uh, it was really fun. It was this very random um, YouTube Red, rest in peace, show <laughs> that okay. we did called The Ultimate Expedition. And um, I was put in a tent with Steve-O and while we were in Peru, uh, found this stray street dog that he just fell in love with. We gave her her first bath, and then she ended up coming up the mountain to base camp with us. N not even like on a leash or force, she just like was like, cool, I'm with you guys now. <laughs> and it was very, very cute. She's really sweet, and yeah, Steve-O has her here now in LA. It has been nearly a decade since you publicly came out on the cover of ESPN and became the first professional athlete to come out in any action sport. One, can you believe it's been a decade? I can't actually, it's crazy. The two, how has your life changed since that moment? Oh my gosh, I mean my life has changed so much and for the better. Like in some ways it feels like it was longer than 10 years ago and in other ways it feels like it was just yesterday. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, there hadn't, there hadn't been anyone that was out in my sport or in, as you said, any, any action sport, which is a pretty big umbrella term. It's like skiing, skateboarding, snowboarding, mountain bike, motocross, mm -hmm. surfing. Just the fact that there hadn't been anyone that was out, I, I was really scared that by coming out, by being the first, I would potentially lose everything, lose sponsors, lose followers, stop getting judged well. Um, but I kind of just like couldn't live with the lie anymore and was really ready to take that stand. And I had already won my Olympic medal and won X Games medals and was like, you know what, if this is the end of my career, then I can look back and be proud of what I accomplished. And so I took that step for me and it ended up just being like 
the best step I could have ever made for myself, for my headspace, my mind, my heart, but also like it actually ended up being a great career move, like, which I did not expect. Yeah. But then there was a lot of brands that wanted to partner with me and tell that story and have that narrative and have a different perspective. And because there wasn't anybody else in any of those sports that um, was out, it, it kind of gave me an opportunity to partner with a lot of cool brands. It's the best thing I could have ever done for myself. That's amazing. Yeah. And you've mentioned that, that that's your legacy. Do you still feel that way? I do. I mean, I feel like I have like a sports legacy, I guess, that I'm proud of, but it feels like, I don't know, I, weirdly like egotistical to like have that be the thing that I'm the most proud of. And there's people that have had um, crazier careers, more X Games medals, more Olympic medals. Um, I think that coming out publicly in, in my sport and when I did is, is the thing I'm the most proud of. And um, honestly, the, the animal rescue work that I've done at multiple Olympics and getting to kind of bring awareness to it on a, 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 a big world stage has been another thing that I'm really, really proud of. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like I've had, a, I've had a pretty great career. It's not been the craziest career, but I, I'm really, really proud of it. And it's set me up with a lot of other opportunities in my life that I'm so grateful for and don't think I would have otherwise. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Thank you for asking. <laughs> You have a lot of first ever tricks that you performed, whether it be slope style, half pipe, uh, pretty much every discipline in your sport, you've got a first ever. Uh, but Birdie also has a ton of tricks. Yeah. Who's better? I mean, I'm gonna give it to Birdie every time. <laughs> uh, I mean, she's not the first one to do these tricks. Dogs have <laughs> sat and shook and bowed and spoken before but she's the cutest yeah. that's ever done them. And I love teaching her new tricks. She's very food motivated, yeah, so it's really helps. it's really easy to teach her things and she's super, super smart. Uh -huh. um, I, I guess maybe I know, I know more tricks than she does, but she's better at the ones that she does than I am at mine. You could do some of hers. She, I don't know if she could, I don't know if she could do some of yours. That's true, that's true. I'll throw you a bone there. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now you've called yourself the dog father. And I'm not sure if you're aware, but that's my Twitter handle. So you can keep- Wait, so I have to sue you and you Jennifer can... Garner. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep calling yourself that and dethrone me if you can identify these famous dogs. Okay, yeah. okay. Okay, well that's Airbud, um, Lassie, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> His name is Doug, rhymes. Doug the Pug. Yep. I also do, I can't remember the name. That's the dog that went to space, right? The yeah. Russian dog? Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll count it. Oh, I don't know that one. Some context clues. Well, I mean, I'm judging, like the guy has the fur hood. I feel like it's a sled dog. Mm-hmm. Think most famous sled dog. There's a cartoon movie. There's a cartoon movie. Yeah, I don't know the name. It's Balto. Balto. Oh. Beethoven. 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 I did pretty good. You did pretty good. You, you can keep your Twitter handle. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that was whew, a little nerve wracking. Do you think you'll ever get Birdie a sibling? Yes, I want to. So yeah? yeah, when I was with my ex for like four years, she had another dog and that dog actually didn't, didn't really like other dogs. So their relationship was a little tumultuous uh, as I guess so is ours. <laughs> but I think she likes having another dog around and she's yeah. really good with other dogs. I'm just like nervous cause she's so perfect to me like she she it's it's seriously like 11 out of 10 no notes and well, i just 14 i we just give her a, like a 13 or a 14, okay great just 16, 16 out of 10 i didn't want to like gush too hard over my dog but i just worry that like maybe another dog would somehow change the dynamic or she i don't know like they wouldn't get along somehow but i do think eventually i i will and i kind of want to get like a really really small rescue dog and it's not even my pet it's actually her pet <laughs> Um, you gotta get your dog a dog. Yeah, exactly. So why do we love dogs? We love dogs because they really are man's best friend. I mean, they're adorable, they're sweet, they're cuddly. There's not anybody else in my life that's as excited to see me, but she just gives me a reason to get out of bed every morning. I love my morning walk with her, with coffee. My routine because of her and with her is like the highlight of my day every day. And I love coming home to her and just getting to have this beautiful light in my life. 
Well, Gus, thank you so much for doing this with us. Thank that you. That was an absolute pleasure. So nice to meet you. Thanks for going on a walk with us. Of course.